Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In this episode of Gardening for a Family of Four, we're going to focus on the original bed, tomatoes, peppers, beans, bunching onions, show you how they're growing. It's been 20 days since the last video and 20 days since we gave them the water-soluble organic fertilizer and they are responding. Right over here, I think in the last video, I showed you potatoes that were laying on the ground. They started to sprout, so I threw a mound of soil onto them. Nothing fancy. They're not fertilized. It's just basic soil. The plants look beautiful, so I'm going to have peppers in there. So this is a happy surprise. Formerly growing the potatoes in the bags, but just, you know, I threw potatoes on the ground. They grew. I put dirt on them. They're growing. Gardening can be that easy. You are going to run into problems, but don't worry. Don't stress out. I also put in some cucumber transplants. Those are squash transplants. We're going to thin that down to one plant because the plants get massive. I'm going to show you how to save and plant the two eggplant right there. They should look something like that eggplant. But the principles that I show you on how to manage and take care of these plants, you can use, you know, in your garden experience for different plants. We'll also go to drop some cucumber seeds, some squash seeds. That will really take care of the summer garden, you know, for your first garden. And I will do another video following up on how to take care of them and, you know, and just show you how these tomatoes and peppers are doing. But please subscribe and follow because we're also going to be planting a fall garden. We're going to put in lettuces, leafy greens, spinach, arugula, radishes, other cool weather crops. And you can grow here in Maryland Zone 7 really into November nowadays. So let's start with where we're at here. Last time the peppers were struggling. They were yellow, they were small, they weren't doing well. It's been 20 days again since the water-soluble fertilizer which gives them that nitrogen that's immediately available to them as well as other um, nutrition that they need like phosphorus, potassium, etc. They look great. They're nice and green. Banana pepper. The green bells are starting to form. The bell peppers have a jalapeno somewhere down in there that's starting to form these are going to start to flower soon you could give them another drink of water soluble fertilizer today or even five days ago just to give them that boost to keep them growing but they're looking pretty good so i'm going to keep an eye on them i am going to feed them one more time but it's going to be the same feeding as i did in the last video the bush beans look good this is a dish rack from a thrift store they're going to push their way through here this will protect the plants from rabbits. Over here are pole beans. I didn't put the protection around there. I just wanted to see what the rabbit pressure was like around here. It doesn't look like the rabbit came in or caused any trouble. And the bunching onions are starting to come up. They grow a little bit more slowly. And remember, the smaller plants are on this side. The southern sun is behind the camera. So the sun is coming in. So these, bean, or these uh, bunching onions will get plenty of sunlight. Looking in there, Mushrooms usually grow where there's more shade. So the peppers and the tomatoes are creating some shade. You're gonna get mushrooms, don't worry too much about it. But I'm very happy that the peppers look so green. Tomatoes are getting huge. They need to be tended to. Same principle that we did in the last video. Just tie them up. You know, this plant's over six feet. It is loaded with tomatoes. I mean, look at everything in here. Look at all those tomatoes. So hopefully you're having success. They're starting to ripen. I've been picking cherry tomatoes out of there. There's a couple on the bottom. We're gonna to get to the diseased leaves. That's what the scissors are for. This plant is well over seven feet. Same thing. You know, just tie it up. Pruning doesn't have to be fancy. You could cut off some of these leaves. Like for instance, this one is coming out. There are some cherry tomatoes on here on there, right there. Rather than cut off this whole thing, I'm going to leave the tomatoes and maybe take it to here and cut it off. And this will manage the size of the vine, but also I get those cherry tomatoes. So you don't always have to kind of remove the, the stem that you don't want all the way back to the main stem. You can just cut off portions of it and leave the tomatoes that are growing. Also starting to weave the cherry tomato along the fence line. But this is well over now, seven feet. I'm gonna probably need another stake. And again, like what I was just talking about, this vine has tomatoes, let me get it in camera, has tomatoes right there. Keep coming up. There's that sucker we were talking about. And then there's more tomatoes. Well, I don't want it to grow any further. 
So I'm going to just cut the plant right there. These will turn into tomatoes. This will be a little bit shortened. It'll grow more slowly, but I'm still getting massive growth. I'll have tons of tomatoes. You can just prune to manage the size. So you should be coming out several times a week, checking out your plants. I have some insects that showed up on here, some disease that showed up on here. I've already sprayed and dusted for that. But when you come out, you're looking at the leaves and these leaves up top look great. They're nice. They're nice and green, no issues. As you come down further, you can see little brown specks on there. Now there's no yellow halo around those specks. So when you have circles within circles within circles, brown concentric circles, and there's a yellow halo around them, that means you have an active fungus. I've already sprayed this with hydrogen peroxide spray. I will put the video that fully explains how to use that in the video description. So you use four ounces to eight ounces of three percent hydrogen peroxide in a gallon of water and you spray down your tomatoes and you do that two or three times every two days and then you stop when you have an infection and then you can kind of or when you have a fungus outbreak or something like that. You can use peroxide as maintenance every 10 to 14 days but I tend to use it more now when I see a problem occur and what it's going to do is it's going to kind of clean the leaves and it's going to stop that fungus from spreading. You also want to get in, I wanted to leave the leaves to show you but when you before you would spray you would just come in Ooh, I just cut right into the stem be careful and you would just cut off all the infected leaves like this one let me pick that up and you're really just kind of looking for problems now even though this is yellow that's really from something else the little spots on there by my thumb they look like they're under control. If these spots had yellow halos around there, that means you have active fungus. So the hydrogen peroxide spray is working. And I'll get in there, clean this all out, show you what it looks like. The other thing that I found were some holes in the leaves, like this is the pepper plant. You can see some holes in there. When you come over here to this one, there's some holes in the leaves and you can see the little white on there. That's spinosad. So you can use insect dust just on the bottom leaves, on the outer leaves. We should, you know, cut this out too. The spinosad will kill insects, beetles, worms, all kinds of different things. And maybe I had some flea beetles on here. So I just dust in here. That looks like it's controlled and killed back the, the beetles. Here's a good example of what the fungus looks like when it's sort of problematic. Let me put that in the shade. You see how brown those spots are? Down just above my thumb there's a little bit of haloing around there but right in the middle there's no yellow halo. The fungus here is really being controlled by the hydrogen peroxide. I might give this one more spray actually after I prune the leaves back. So when you see the infection you can remove the leaves right away you can leave the leaves on there. Just make sure you spray them well with H2O2. It really, really works. So I'm not concerned about this. Your tomato leaves are going to get beat up. Fungus are going to show up. Or fungi is going to show up. And just treat it. Have a plan in place. And I like using, again, the hydrogen peroxide. You could put a baking soda spray on there. That helps manage fungus. But I found H2O2 works the best. And it's really, really inexpensive. So a little bit of dust out here with the spinosad insect dust. That works really well, controlled the insects, and I've got the disease under control. And now I'm going to get in here and cut out all the leaves that are problematic, tie up the tomato plant. We're good to go. This section looks pretty good. I'm going to give them another feeding of the water-soluble fertilizer, and then I'm probably not going to feed the plants in here anymore. So right now, going forward through the rest of July and August, it's really about maintaining the size of your plants dealing with any problems that show up, and then you're just going to be harvesting. All right, so let's set up to uh, plant some seeds. Well, a couple of things before we get to planting the seeds. First of all, I wanted to show you that I did tie them up. That's all I did. You know, it might, be, might even be hard to see. Nothing fancy. That's all I took off the plants. That was the infected leaves and some of the pruning. So not a whole lot. What's really important is to continue with that principle that we talked about in the last video is to really clear out the bottom and let airflow be down there. You will also know that notice that a lot of the disease started down low on the plant. So if you remove the leaves 
let the airflow go through, sometimes you get less of a problem with both pests and diseases, actually. And you can see that I cleared out the area right in there. Here's another issue that I noticed. Look how twisted these leaves are right here. That's not from the powder that's on there. That was the insect stuff. Look, really, really twisted. That may happen to your plant. This can happen because insects were chewing on the new leaves when they were first forming. Could be from nature. Nobody really notices, or knows actually. We notice, we just don't know why. A little bit of disease on there. Let's just cut that off. But you can see the weird pattern that was right on here. But they all tend to be at the same level. So when you see that, there's not much you can really do. As the plant got bigger, it kind of worked itself out. This one seems a little bit distorted, but they look fine going all the way up. So that's not something you really have to worry about. The other thing is the cherry tomatoes are just going to go crazy. There's going to be all kinds of growth and you don't have to tie up everything. So right in here, I have a sucker that matured. And I really just don't need that in there. You know, I want to let that sunshine get in there. You'll have less problems with mushrooms. You'll have that better airflow. And you want to make sure when you're pruning that you're removing anything might be, that might be hanging over your pepper plants or your other plants and just not letting the sun get into there. But that's it. That's all I'm doing. They look pretty good. And the harvesting will really start uh, to happen regularly over the next seven days or so. So I'm going to plant some squash. This is Sunstripe. You want to put two squash seeds into the planting hole and you're going to thin it down to one plant. You don't want to put in one seed and be waiting for it to germinate and it doesn't happen. It's really straightforward like I've been showing you. This is the same for cucumbers, so except for cucumbers you would put in... Let's get that in frame. I don't know what my issue is today. Just dig a hole like that. You're going to put in about two to three tablespoons of organic granular fertilizer, anything that's on sale, just sprinkle it, or sprinkle it around. You don't want to put transplants directly on that. You don't want to plant directly into a big handful of granular fertilizer, but just something like that, mix it in. We know that the area here has fertilizer now, and we're just going to take the two seeds, one, two, push them into about a half an inch, cover them over, water them in. They should germinate within the next probably five days. Now, it's the uh, 10th of July. These plants are ready, cucumber plants are ready in anywhere from 50 to 55 days from germination. So we have plenty of time here in Maryland Zone 7. You can keep planting your cucumbers, your squash through May, through June, into July and these will continue to grow until a frost comes. So don't feel like you've missed out on anything. Put in your squash plants now. I could also put in cucumber plants. In here, the one squash plant is going to take up this whole space. Right in front, we're going to put those eggplant that I was showing you. They're going to be in the front. The sun will get them. The squash can grow over there. I wouldn't want to put anything else in here because that squash plant's going to overshadow them. If I didn't put in the squash, I would just drop the cucumber plants probably right here. It would be three seeds, and I would thin them down to two, and I would just let them trellis up the fence and do their thing right there. But don't overcrowd your plants. Squash plants are going to get huge. In fact, let's go thin that other one I was talking about. I already cut and removed one of the zucchini plants. So your summer squash, summer zucchini, you only want one plant in about a four foot section. They just get massive. So I'm on Instagram. I just did a reel on showing you how to thin the plant down. So if you want to follow me under the rusted garden on Instagram, I have one minute gardening tips that I put out just about daily. One squash plant, you can keep two cucumber plants in the space. They're going to be trellised up, so they're going to look great. All right, let's take care of uh, saving those eggplant. You can save plants that are struggling, that have been in containers for far too long. They're usually yellow. They look something like this. They may have flowers on there. Remove any flower clusters. You don't want these plants to be producing fruit or flowers in the next two weeks. We want them to really just come to life, develop a nice root system, get nice and green, big leaves they can fruit and flower in about two weeks. So this is an eggplant. You can use this principle just about for any plant that's been in the container too long. Loosen up the roots. You want them to kind of just gently be broken up so that they're going in different directions. You really want this plant to establish a solid root system and then we're gonna hit it with some water-soluble fertilizer. So in the planting hole, this is how we set up, you know, the tomato and pepper garden. 
couple handfuls, one handful, just something to really mix in the organic granular fertilizer. I don't know what that, oh, that's a handle to a shovel. Really mix in the organic granular. You never want to plant right on that granular fertilizer. You can plant this down to about here, you know, maybe a half an inch or so. And we are just getting this into the ground. It looks terrible. But again, you can save just about any plant like this, and that's how we save the pepper plants. So the organic granular will slowly break down over the weeks and provide food for the eggplant. This other one will go down there. And then all you really do is I'm using AgroThrive. You can find that in my video description. I, mean, I am affiliated. Yeah, I am affiliated with them. A nice big soaking of any water-soluble fertilizer, and that's all it needs right now. I'm gonna come back, do this one more time with the water soluble in about a week. But if you follow me on this uh, uh, series, you'll see how well this eggplant comes back and grows. That's all you really have to do. Water soluble fertilizer provides nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that's immediately available to your plants. So it's really gonna help any of your struggling plants. You can use it for plants that are already in the ground and are looking yellow, or you can use it to save this plant. And I just wanted to demonstrate the power of the water soluble fertilizer by showing you how well this plant's gonna be doing in about two weeks. I'm gonna give the pepper plants some more of the water soluble, not too much. Again, I just wanna show you how much. Quick drink, just like that. It doesn't have to be the whole gallon that you prepare. So I'll feed the pepper plants. Please subscribe, follow. I'll show you how these plants do over the next couple of weeks. And then for a family of four, you know, this may be too small. This may be just what you want to start with. But you can slowly start expanding the beds, planting more, and kind of just go at your own pace. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And have a wonderful weekend.